It was really several years that we had in mind to make a documentary about dogs, especially a pack of stray dogs, because it really interested us uh, cinematically that we want to dedicate a 90 minute film just to the life of dogs. So in first place, we had this idea and uh, like images of dogs straying like shadows, something very mystical and uh, also physical to create an experience uh, where you really feel um, as a human to be part of a dog pack of dogs in cinema. So this was the first approach we had, but back then it was not clear where in the world we would uh, follow a pack of stray dogs. So it was clear for us very early also that we want to give a framework to this film, which is um, somehow connected to fairy tales or to something mythical, a big story. And in the classic research, we just came along across the story of Laika. We knew about Laika, of course, as a famous dog and the first living being in space, but we did not know that she was born on the streets of Moscow. So this was new for us. And in this moment, it was like really a very intensive moment in when we were sitting down and uh, like talking about the possibilities of this film and when we then knew it was a stray dog who was sent up to space it was clear for us uh, clear where we have to go and which path we want to follow yeah and from then, then on we really started to uh, yeah to plan all this and to to create this myth and expand this myth uh, and first of all yeah go to moscow and, and search for stray dogs there From the beginning of this idea, as, as I described, we really like the contradiction between these two layers. And what you see in the archive is, is a very clean place. It's for us, even though it's very old material, it still feels like science fiction. It's almost a place without life. It's, it's really like this yeah, sci-fi, futuristic, ambience and the dogs are mainly like a biological mass surrounded by humans and, and tested. And on the other hand, in Moscow on the street, you see how the dogs conquer a city, how they like search for new spaces everywhere. And so we thought it's, it's very interesting to bring these two layers together because we think it's one big story. It's not two stories. It's, uh, it's one big fairy tale out of the perspective of the dogs. So we think these layers, they mirror each other. It's a very interesting, yeah, it's like a dialogue between these archive footages and the dogs you see in Moscow today. Actually, it's not simulation, it's uh, all archive material. Like everything you see in space dogs, uh, like what Levin described, we got out of archives, but partly it's also archived from NASA, from US. Uh, we were really blown away when we saw it the first time. It's a material from 2012, when I'm right, um, when they first time managed to film the whole re-entry process of a space capsule back into Earth atmosphere. So these, all the forms and the gases and the, the colors you see, uh, which are for us the symbol for the yeah the burning of like us body or the, the ship or the like the transformation of her into a ghost uh, it's basically just the physical thing that is happening when a spacecraft is going back to earth and so we found this it's a in the original material it's a digital shot it's not on film because it's quite late um, filmed but for us it was so intense that we decided we want to make it for cinema and to, to also blow it up and to like uh, get rid of all the digital noises and stuff which is in the frame. So of course we treated this material and made it more beautiful for cinema, but the col colors and, and everything you see, it's, uh, it's real. As you mentioned, of course, there are a few actually a lot of uh, unpleasant scenes in the film. I mean, unpleasant is, of course, to see the dogs in the, in the archive material, like the first time you see what really happened in the Soviet Union in the space dog program, but you also see them very wild and following their nature on the streets of Moscow. It's basically what you see is a, 
yeah, as a daily routine to to manage uh, quite a tough life in in this um, Moscow city, which is not a city that it's like easy to live for for an animal. And I think what this film is showing is this also that these dogs are still wild animals and. Um, it also shows that these dogs have a very strange, yeah, like position um, in our world. They are on one hand, they are very close to humans. They can live among us in a city. But on the other hand, they come from their very wild ancestors. And there are scenes in the film when you see how the dogs are with each other that they like uh, always struggle to find the balance between hierarchy and and companionship. Also, you see how they treat other species, which is of course unpleasant, but for us it's also very pure and um, important to see that they do not follow our rules, our human rules. So about the relationship, it's it's more that we think that the dogs in the film, they ask a lot of questions to us to the spectator, to the people who live with them. But this is more the relationship that we see in the film and that we think is, is more interesting.